Well, back to Deuteronomy. Now let's look at 24. Deuteronomy 24. Okay? Because I want to share with you, if you want to be a godly dad and husband, there's some biblical areas that we need to address. In Deuteronomy 24, and look at verse 5. I I love this. This is under the miscellaneous laws of uh, the Pentateuch. I just think it's just a gem. Verse 5, When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home for a year. Wow. I wish we were under that part of the law, don't you? I wouldn't mind that at all. But look at this. And bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. Before he gets in planting the vineyard, and before he gets into trimming the olive trees, before he gets into stacking the rocks on those rock walls that that were around their vineyards and around their olive groves and around their sheep folds, they have rock fences. I mean, the whole all of Israel is covered with rock fences everywhere you look. Before you got into slugging the rocks and trimming the trees, look at the end of verse five. Bring happiness. To his wife whom he's taken. If we were to take, and I would challenge you to do this sometime, look at all the verses in the Bible about wives. And look at them personally. And, and if you look closely, you'll find that the Bible says that there are some specific areas husbands are supposed to meet to make their wives happy. We were just in Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 says that a godly husband will be washing his wife. What do you mean by that? Washing her with the word. And, and what that means is a discipling husband will be heard reading the word of God to his wife. And he is the one who will initiate God's word into the cycle of their everyday life. And so it, a wife has a need for, for the washing of the word. And, and she should be led in that by her husband. And, and it can be in the setting of the family devotional time. Or if you're just a couple in the private devotional time. But God says that a, a godly man will be making sure that the washing of the word goes across his wife and he will wash her with the word. Uh, Also, he'll lead. A discipling husband will give a stable direction as a spiritual leader. You know, the Lord says that the husband is supposed to love the wife as Christ loves the church. What does Christ say? He says, I am the shepherd and and the good shepherd. he, He leads his sheep and he feeds and cares for them. So what does that mean? A husband as an under-shepherd of Christ leads and gives stable direction to his family. A wife needs a man to lead her. Uh, Also, a wife needs her husband to need her. A discipling husband tells his wife she is meeting the vital needs in his life that no other woman can meet. That's why the heart of the husband safely trusts in her. He does not give his heart to anyone else. And there has to be that needing. Um, The Lord says, uh, you'll seek me and find me when you seek for me with what? All your heart. That's a key to marriage. What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? If your eye is single, focused on one, your whole body's full of light. She needs to know you need her, you lead her, you wash her, cherish her. Um, It's... it's, uh, A discipling husband allows his wife to see and hear that he cherishes her and delights in her as a person. Uh, Back to Ephesians 5. I mean, um, it it says there in Ephesians 5, and of course these are all the way through the scriptures, but it says that that no one um, has ever hated themselves, but they nourish and cherish their own bodies. Verse 29. And, And It says that that's the attitude that a godly man who's discipling his wife exhibits toward her, that he cherishes her. That that just like, you know, we wouldn't, uh, you know, sit on a thorn bush purposefully, we would not allow our beloved one either. If we cherish her as ourself, we protect. and, And the whole concept of cherishing a discipling husband allows his wife to see and hear. He cherishes her and delights in her. And and a corollary to that is protecting her. A discipling husband shows he understands his wife by protecting her in areas of limitation. And that's that's the idea of a shared life. If if you uh, if your lives correspond to one another, as as Genesis two says, they're supposed to. We're supposed to have lives that correspond to one another. 
Now, the Hebrew word is very interesting. It's the word for uh, uh, something that's torn that fits exactly back together or a broken pot that fits together. I remember when I was in high school, it was big. Uh, a lot of these kids would wear a half of something that fit together, and then they'd give the other half to someone that, that they had their, you know, had their class ring and all that stuff. I never had a class ring, never gave one away either um, until I found Bonnie. Then I gave everything away to her. But uh, I remember it used to be so silly to see them. They'd come up and they'd put their, their two pieces together, you know, at school. But now when I think back, that is a biblical picture of marriage. Because that's the word corresponding, fitting. And God says our lives, when he ordained uh, marriage, he made a partner for us whose life corresponds to us. And that he wants to glue us together and to have our lives Uh, fill in the the weaknesses and limitations of the other. And a godly husband will protect his wife. He will will, uh, protect her by knowing her limitations as she knows his. He will cherish her. He needs her. He leads her. He washes her. Another one, he'll notice her. Uh, I think about this. A discipling husband enjoys setting quality time aside for intimate conversations with his wife. So she knows he's aware of her presence even when his mind is on other matters. That's so critical. You know what the Lord says? He says, I am a jealous God. That's one of his prime attributes. He's jealous. And he says, if you love me, you will stir yourself up, as it says in Isaiah 64, to take hold of me. He says, you will seek me when you seek for me with all your heart. Uh, 2 Chronicles 69, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for someone whose heart is completely toward him. Well, if we're supposed to men love our wives as Christ loves the church, then we are to express this this quality time for intimate conversation and sharing our longing. Even though we can't spend every minute with her, we have the heart attitude we would if we could. In fact, I tell my wife, that's why I'm so glad she's here tonight, I say, I married Bonnie because she's the one person in the whole world I'd love to spend all my time with. All of it. I wish I could. I can't. I wish I could. And that's part of us noticing her. And finally, the scriptures say, and back to Ephesians 5 again, we need to sacrifice for her. A discipling husband is willing to serve his wife in encouraging her, in giving himself for her in regular ways. Not just lip service. I mean, it says that, that Christ gave himself for the church. And so a husband, if he is Christ-like, is giving himself. He is, he is sacrificing himself. He's saying no, because we are all born self-centered, self-driven, self-ish. And we have to say no and deny ourselves for our wife. Well, that's what a wife needs. 